Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Before we start, we have a few basic housekeeping items. We want to bring your attention to an important update regarding the conference schedule. There was an error with the Australian Times for the New York sessions, sessions F and H on the original schedule. Please visit our website at www.gadmc.org to view the updated and corrected schedule. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled. So if you have any questions, we encourage you to use the Q&A box. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captioning. So if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, please click the closed caption icon at the bottom of the screen. We encourage you to use the hashtag GADMCONF in your posts on social media to help spread the word about the conference. A short evaluation will be made available as you exit the presentation. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help to shape the next GAPMAC conference. Finally, a reminder that this video recording and all other presentations will be available later this year after it has been properly edited. It is our privilege to have Mr. Gerardo Huertas with us today. He is an animal disaster risk reduction consultant based in Costa Rica focusing on developing capacity for preparedness and resilience. He is with us this morning to present Last Chance for Disaster Resilience Building, Visualization of Future Scenarios. Gerardo? Thank you, Jean. Um, I am praying to seven gods of Winterfell for this uh, internet connection to work. Um, so let's see how that goes. And uh, I had to move it this way for, for some reason. Um, had anyone been asked, had anyone been asked the day before if this was even a remote possibility, the uh, attack on Pearl Harbor, they would have said no. Now, how did you feel during the uh, pandemic? Okay, bad or terrible? Next time, would you rather be confident and calm? This is a role game for the imagination, an emotionally challenging exercise, but a really um, worthwhile or worth the while. Uh, most of you are familiar with field drills and desk simulations. They are probably the best arguably the best uh, to build uh, the best targets to build capacity but as you also know they are costly complex and limited in, the, in their target numbers <clears throat> the private sector in colombia the private farm animal sector has regularly held field disaster simulation drills until now and during the pandemic we even had uh, simulations online and um, i I invite you to check for Colombia out on the YouTube and check the videos because they were uh, a really uh, good effort. Although, like I said, it was only able to reach an, a number of people, a finite number, finite number of people. But then how do you convince uh, and uh, involve thousands of people at a time? I'd like to talk to you about the analogy of the elephant and the rider. This is important because um, it, it speaks about the way the mind, the human mind uh, works. New York University psychologist Jonathan Haltz um, described the human mind as an elephant driven by emotions and the guide driven, its guide dr driven by rational rationality. Now, the intuitive mind is represented by the elephant because he gives 95% of the uh, 
the trip or, or the decisions. It's just a big, big, uh, powerful animal, difficult to maneuver. And the uh, rational mind rationalizes uh, the thoughts and also is supposed to steer the elephant. But in most cases, and this is, this is something I really didn't know, uh, limits itself to rationalize the decisions the elephant was taking, which is, or is taking, which is really uh, interesting. But this, this means also that disaster risk reduction, for example, or any other matter, but in this case, our interest is, is on risk reduction, must be sold intuitively, as opposed to, uh, to rationally. So there is a new tool called the visualization of future scenarios. And it's important because this is how we get to uh, hundreds or thousands of people at a time with a fraction of the effort and the money we've, uh, we've done so far. Here is the mood stages of any one of us after impact in a, in a, in a disaster. Imagine yourself, uh, you being um, hit with the news of the pandemic or a new pandemic, and that is <clears throat> the disaster uh, at the left-hand side. Um, the normal way uh, the uh, humans react is that they go in denial. We all go into denial and we do not, do not want to accept reality and then get angry to finally get into depression. Some people don't get out of depression and that becomes a real problem. But if you're lucky enough to get out of depression stage, you go into the acceptance uh, mode and then into the reconstruction mode. Which is, which is the best way we can uh, describe resilience, uh, by the way. But how about if we could, uh, if we could uh, move from disaster to acceptance? That would be great because then uh, we would jump the denial and the anger and the depression phases going straight into, in, into the acceptance and reconstruction bit. So bypassing uh, all of these elements, is what we want to do. And uh, how do we do that? Let me tell you now, and I'm going, I promise I'm not gonna get too crazy with science here. Uh, we're gonna get into the nitty, uh, nitty details soon. The reticular filter in the brain, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, structure that helps us filter large amounts of data every day. It's a part, apparently we get over 50,000 bits of data um, in the morning and another one at noon and then again in the afternoon, that has to uh, be processed by the brain. And if all of them arrived at the same time, we would probably be in trouble. It also regulates conscience and self-awareness. Uh, that is the way our brain perceives itself, um, ourselves into our surroundings. And then it's critical for survival during disasters. Again, it's just uh, the way the brain learns how to cope with reality. But it's also able to learn from both reality and detailed visualization. So you can see here uh, a bunch of information coming into a uh, filter. And uh, this, is what, this is what the brain actually gets as, as a representation of reality. But the reticular, the reticular filter can be tricked uh, and uh, to think that he's looking at reality when in fact he's looking at fiction or, or videos or audios. So it, it also means that we can teach him things without having to experience them in, in, in real time. And here is an experiment that has always puzzled me that was carried out in the US. A group of people with no previous knowledge uh, about basketball was taken to practice free throws on a basketball court, say for the sake of argument, 10 people. And they just played, uh, practiced uh, fr free throws for an hour. And another group was taken into a room and with the help of a coach, they visualized uh, making free throws in great detail. And this is important, the detail, because the brain needs to believe it's actually happening to him. So they felt the, um, they discussed the, the sensation of holding the ball. Was it hard? Was it uh, soft? Uh, was it heavy? Was, not, was it not heavy? Uh, the jump 
mechanisms, the muscles, and the feeling of, of uh, making free throws. The results of this was that uh, were, were exactly the same. Once, uh, once those two groups were put together and uh, to make real free throws, uh, the results were the same, which means that, um, that the brain learned visualizing as well as uh, actually doing it. So we've, uh, we've done uh, a few scenarios of, uh, of difficult situations like war. And not because we, uh, war is a, is a good game to play, but because it's a sad reality that we're facing every day nowadays. Uh, this is important in, or, in order to help uh, us survive, the subjects, but also to uh, learn how to um, help animals survive. And uh, uh, a, a scenario of a war in 2025 was played with uh, focus groups in India, in Asia, in Africa and in Latin America, a couple of them actually in Latin America, in order to adapt this, this great tool, this new tool to helping animals um, as well, farm and domestic animals. And why? Why do we need a new tool? Because there is no time. We don't have enough time, especially if we want to adapt these scenarios to uh, climate change, to be able to reach all of the veterinarians, all of the people involved in civil defense, and all of the animal um, owners around the world. Anyway, the, the instructions are that you need to document your feelings, sensations, thoughts, mental images, sounds, and then start trying to document mitigation strategies for each threat. Um, the coaches for this, uh, for this exercises help with the hints here and there, also help with the sounds and videos and uh, information bits in order to make the, uh, the visualization as real as possible. And we, we put it together in four days. Uh, started building the momentum and the anxiety and then developing the uh, mitigation strategies for your loved ones, for yourself and for your animals. It was a, it was an, a really interesting experience for all of us. You need to, however, come in uh, to this uh, exercise with an open mind. If you start um, rejecting or doubting that this is going to be a good idea, it's probably not gonna be a good idea. But uh, this game may be quite thought provoking. It's also, it also makes the player confront hidden fears some folk would rather avoid. But by facing those fears, players will come out stronger at the other end. This is a new disruptive approach that promises to bypass the immense hurdle and challenge that the UN and all of the disaster risk reduction world faced for the last four decades, namely the championing of disaster preparedness and risk reduction for all audiences, let alone animals. Coming, so coming with an open mind and vivid imagination to immerse yourself in an entirely new reality and rules uh, to do something you have never done before. Imagination is how we humans pull the future into the present. And those are really uh, meaningful words. Your imagination is strongly framed by your experiences. Thus, is need, it needs training on how to accept the reality and use new approaches that may come in handy in the future. Don't worry if you feel overwhelmed by these scenarios at first. Freezing is a primal response and the game is a safe place to experiment with how to get away from danger. Dator's law postulates any useful statement about the future should at first seem ridiculous. Accepting the possibility of strange realities reduces the shock in the future and improves our ability to change it. So no fiction is too far-fetched. Uh, if you're not the hero of your story, you better find another story or write another story. And uh, this, this is the chance to discover risks and opportunities. Um, we usually, uh, in, in this exercise, as I mentioned before, we put together um, a diary. Um, every, every participant wrote a diary. 
And they wrote, these are the main issues they wrote. How was my day today? How did my skills help me? And how could I help my family and my animals? And uh, it would surprise you how beautifully this worked. At the end of the day, all the, 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 every group of participants talked to each other, uh, brainstormed ideas, and came up the other, the other way, the other, on the other side in a really good place. Um, but I don't think that is going to be all for this uh, new um, new tool. Artificial intelligence is going to be uh, is going to allow us to mine and correlate big data. What does that What does that mean? Basically, uh, artificial intelligence will, uh, in a matter of seconds, get the weather uh, forecasts, the weather past, uh, the current weather in in the areas you're interested to to develop one of these tools, uh, population uh, data, um, assets, so how many animals in this case, how many farms, uh, how are the um, the inroads uh, to them, uh, services, electricity, water, et cetera, uh, gr gross development product and history. And put together such a scenario that is going to be, such a real scenario that is going to be hard not to believe is reality. Uh, it would also it would also help make 3D scenarios a reality in no time and with very little investment streamed through individual VR lenses. And this is going to be a great way to learn how to handle any kind of emergencies in the future. And it will be able to study each target. You've probably seen yourself discussing things in front of your television or your uh, phone and immediately getting... Uh, uh, promotional ads about the subject you were discussing. There is no intimacy anymore. We shouldn't fool ourselves. But uh, studying each target through social media, publications, photos, posts, etc., cetera, and, and coming back with a perfect tailor-made uh, product or simulation for that target would be a great uh, move forward. And it's in its smallest iteration, apps, can help the you know, artificial intelligence apps can help us brainstorm mitigation strategies when we are um, in the in the game. So this is an exciting field that is going to happen really really soon in the short term. Um, and then we have we will have autonomous agents, which are even more scary uh, on artificial intelligence because they are autonomous. And they can do the entire exercise. They can cost. They can uh, calculate the cost benefits ratios, uh, provide evaluation and feedback, key points and messages. If we want to make uh, make it public to to the media, and enhanced networking of the participants and other participants in other parts of the world. Like Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is by creating it. And as conclusions. Uh, this is a tool, an approach that can reach thousands of stakeholders at a time. And the Institute for, for, uh, for the Future in California has done this in the past. They have uh, done exercises for five and 10,000 people at a time. So it's, it's just a matter of um, adapting it to uh, protecting uh, livestock and domestic animals and pets. It can bypass negative stages of the mood, as I showed you. Uh, just just the the uh, possibility of um, avoiding depression is it's unimaginable. The reticular filter in the brain is the place where we can do the tricks, and all we want to do is be ready for the future. The um, the last month in uh, Bangkok, the UN held. Um, as a seminar called Advanced Resilience Planning Using Disaster Resilience Scorecard for Cities. You don't see the animals, you don't see the veterinary uh, sector or the farm animal sector uh, anywhere near these this places, in spite of the fact that food security and the livelihood protection would be uh, huge, according to FAO, if, if they get hit. So. The conclusions, as you said, uh, are that we are in the, in, the, in the face of a really new tool 
that can beat anyone, uh, any other tool we've had in the past. And uh, this short presentation is just scratching the surface, hoping to promote uh, more discussion about these things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gerardo. What an amazing presentation. We did have a question. Um, what was the feedback from the participants in the exercises? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I was hoping you, you will ask me. And uh, I want to start by thanking the Seven Gods of Winterfell for letting me do this. Um, yes, um, India, very interesting. Uh, Kenya, also interesting. Uh, Latin America, each of them helped me, at least uh, helped me understand that you need to tailor make this, uh, tailor this, this products to the specific uh, societies and specific customs. Not, uh, they were not similar in the way they, they treated, uh, they handled the animals, not treated, just handled animals. They were not similar to the way they, they treated geopolitics. I was amazed to see how uh, some of these countries will uh, side in this, the scenario was a, a war. It was a apocalyptic war basically, but it was a war between the US and Russia, I'm sad to say, but you know you have to make it realistic. And some of them would uh, would side with Russia, and some of them would side with with America. And and that was important because of the logistics of getting uh, medicines and support and uh, trying to survive uh, radioactive clouds coming from from this and and there. Um, for that, we needed to check at the uh, at the uh, at, at the uh, season of the year. And the prevailing winds that would carry such a such a terrible cloud. So I think what what the, the the first thing that I learned is that you need to work a lot into the preparation of the scenario to make it so realistic it's impossible to escape. And that is that is why I'm so excited with artificial intelligence because it can make it uh, so realistic. You may not know which is reality and which is the scenario. Absolutely. The, the beauty, the beauty of this, but if I may, Gene, is that for a few thousand dollars, you can reach hundreds and hundreds of people, as opposed to uh, drills, which I've done a ton of them uh, in the last thirty years, and they are really expensive, and they they kill you. You know, so much work there is involved uh, in order to make them. Um, real so um so this is a, a positive way to do this you we did it through our phones as a matter of fact uh it was designed to work on on your phone so so some of this stuff you did it while while you were commuting to work so imagine imagine how cool is that very we did have another question um paulo asks machine learning needs sound data Currently, there is a lack of after action reports. What is your opinion? And do you have any suggestions for gathering those? Uh, machines are the easiest, the easy part. The difficult part are humans that are trying to grab on, hold on to information like it was a, a treasure. I remember 20 years ago, maybe more in Argentina, I went to a province there and uh, after you know whatever presentation we made there were a bunch of people coming in and they were competing on who, who was best uh, at their job and one of them said to me we were talking about floods and one of them said i have flood mapping of everywhere here it's uh, it's perfect the moment we uh, you know the people see it it's going to be fine i just don't want to show them to them because it's mine and no, you know it's just mine like like my precious you know it was terrible, and this is hap this happens every time. Uh, sharing information and sharing new technologies, and sharing you know how to improve these technologies is the difficult part. The machine learning bit is going to be the easy, like Polo said. You know, you input the information. In this case, uh, as as I was talking about autonomous agents and uh, artificial intelligence, um, getting uh, weather data and economical data and geographical data and uh, human data uh, it's not going to be the easiest in the world but it's not impossible that really and if you put artificial intelligence to do that they can do a lot 
Uh, I think I think the, the in in less than a year this is going to be done by by a by a bot without much work because there is so much information out there that if you know how to handle it uh, how to maneuver it especially in social media that's the stupidest thing on earth to to do you know the amount of information we put in our social media but it's there for us to grab so why not. Thank you, Gerardo.